in the grand theater of musical critique dj academics like an orator from ancient athens takes center stage to lament the decline of lil baby's popularity dissecting the artist's recent missteps with the surgical precision of hypocrites people empowered you to do y'all became mannequins walking mannequins y'all want to be in paris and france hugging with james harden just like he ain't doing none of the basketball court y'all not doing none of the both let's be honest about it so now y'all looking like a shell of the people y'all used to be the people you used to influence don't connect with you no more they're looking for other people they're looking for other influences they're looking for people who they identify with more now, there was a time I would just say, well, you know, these guys are aging, but it's not even that. Your little baby's directly in the game. He's lost it. The creativity seems to be like Trump by all this other bullshit he got going on. And I don't know who the yes man in the studio with him that keeps telling him to put out these trash music. Did y'all hear the last two songs he put out? He can't. He don't got confident in one song no more. He keep putting out two and three songs at a time, hoping you'll catch one of them and not one of them is hidden. When are we going to really talk about this? What's his last two songs? One's called 365 or 360, and then another song. He just dropped a two pack just now. They're mid. Let me get off of this because I, you know, I, I ain't really going on Meek, really, but it's it just, it's really the Michael Rubin thing. I think people keep saying, Ack is a curse of getting, getting mad at you. I think it's a Michael Rubin curse. Little baby can't find a hit. Go look, go look on Spotify. Go look on Spotify. Go to Little Baby. Matter of fact, call that. Just go to his comment section and see what's going on. Because sometimes, you know what I mean? I know he might struggle with reading, but I could read a lot. I could read a lot. The the fall off must be studied. I hate to say, because you used to be one of the hottest. I didn't filter these comments. These are what's in his. You could read. I could read. What's the disconnect? These niggas want to be models. These niggas want to be in Paris. They don't want to be no more the guys who influence the culture. They made enough money, and I get it. By the way, these guys are hundreds of millions of dollars up. But when we talk about them in music and we say don't hit the, the same no more, I hope they don't get offended as we're just speaking the truth. You can so smoke your Cuban cigar and walk around with your little double cup. Of, like, really, that's that look like it's a coffee cup, but it's okay. But it don't hit the same no more. You drop two songs. Good morning, happy Friday. Drop two new songs. Listen to what the people are saying. I didn't filter these comments. I hate to say it because you used to be one of the hottest round. That's the thing that when I was talking to my baby, thought I was hating. I'm sorry. I'm an avid music fan. I like to hold my great artists to great expectations. I don't hold them to mediocre expectations. So when I said about it's only me and I said, ah, it's only me was it's only mid. People said I was hating. All right, well, prove me wrong. This thing has been acting like he's been stuck in a studio like it was a hyperbolic time chamber for the last two years, and all he's coming up with is a replica of the last five songs he's coming out with. When you listen to Little Baby, for the first 15 seconds, you're going to think, oh, this this sounds like, and you're going to name a song. I cut this on, 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 on Spotify. I said, oh, this shit sounds like another try to try to create all in. I get it. Now, here's the thing, and this is why we got to keep it truthful. By the way, Lil Baby's rich. He ain't going to ever be broke. Our opinion don't matter to his pockets. These guys aren't in it for the art. They're in it for the pockets. Okay? So don't think that because I'm saying this means I'm killing this. It doesn't matter. My opinion doesn't matter. But my opinion does matter when it comes to the truth about what the music is going. Lil Baby, we thought, was the guy. He's not. Let's get him out of here. There was a time I I thought so. I was saying if there was an incumbent to Drake, it was going to be him. I heard him on wants and needs. I heard the bars. I heard it. I said the skill is there. The talent's there. The work ethic's there. He's going to be the guy. I'm glad to say today I was wrong. He could rap. But he don't got too much creativity in that body. He keep making the same song. Just with different lyrics. In a different little tune. I could blame the beats, but he's gotten beats from everybody at this point. So what are we going to say? We've never seen something like this. How do you create, a, 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 like, really, I think it's a generational album, my turn, especially after the deluxe drop. How do you do that and literally have been batting 0% for the last two, three years? How do we do that? How is there no inspiration for the music you're making? How is that 
you came you went from being the number one contender to now people are saying that the, the person who used to be your Scotty Pippen is the new Jordan. We talk about Gunner. How does this happen? Somebody tell me I'm wrong because listen, I'm not reading it that's made up. I'll refresh the page if you think I'm lying. I'm refreshing the page. This is his last picture where he announces two songs three days ago or two days ago. Just look. I hate to say because you used to be one of the hottest round, but you think you falling off faster than Jordan Poole, nigga. Switch the flow. His fall, <laughs> falling off faster than Jordan Poole? <laughs> Her baby <laughs> fall off must be studied. D Money 006. I might be tripping, but them ain't it. Nigga, Gunna. just throw gun into the mix. Follow you got yeah. a, you, you got one of your female followers here that said, nah, they ain't gonna never let me hate you. Somebody says it's about the time they starve it. Somebody said, man, who mixed it? Who mastered it? Put it like this. Y'all all all y'all rappers want Kai. Y'all all on Kai because y'all need Kai's approval to make y'all feel like y'all made some shit. But even Kai Sinet, Kai Sinet, uh um Lil Baby. I, I need to get his reaction to Lil Baby's uh so DJ Academics. Even Kai. Kai just fuck with you because you came to his bedroom and, and dealt with all the shenanigans he was doing. He really wanted to say it was whack. You know what he, he did? He just blamed your engineers. The engineers. You just dropped some mid hours. Where is it at? Is it this? No, I, I think it's you. I think you posted on your main account. Nah, I, ain't, I posted on main. I ain't posted on main. I posted on oh, God. main. I would have posted on the main, but uh, you know, I don't want people sure. like. I genuinely wanted to hear what people had to say first. Hold on, hold on. I'm I'm gonna find it right now. Just, I'm gonna find it right now. And by the way, you know, I'm not blaming all this on like like on some like Michael Rubin shit, but but th there is a thing here that we gotta analyze and we gotta study. What is happening to these artists that you know the reason why I'm giving Nicki Minaj credit even recently, I got to give Nicki Minaj credit. I got to give Nicki Minaj credit uh, because, give me one second, right here. Oh, I see it. I got to give Nicki Minaj credit. You know, I got to give her credit because she's showing us what it means to sell music, not gimmicks. She's telling us where, hey, well, let's focus on the music and let's judge accordingly. And you know why I'm so hard pause against Lil Baby is because he's talented. He's one of the guys. Don't make it. I don't care what me and his issues are. He's one of the guys. If you don't, let me tell you this. We don't get that, that deluxe by Drake, that scary hours, whatever, without us telling Drake. We, we ain't feeling that shit. Y'all keep calling me acting like whatever they dropped is hot, like it's just hot fire. They'll never, ever give you nothing better. You got to start telling these artists they're dropping trash. Little baby, what happened to you? Everybody loves you still, but we riding around listening to your old hits because you knew it's try to sound like your old hits. What happened to you, brother? What is the deal? Don't tell me you had a writer because ever since Thug got locked up, you ain't making no hits by yourself. What's happening to you, dog? Ever since you and Gunner don't collaborate, we can't see it. What's happening to you, brother? This is the fall off of seismic proportions. We've never seen this before. What's happening, brother? Look, even Kai, he's trying to understand it. He can't comprehend it. What's going on? Just want a date. Piss me off. We taking this shit every which I'm not even joking. The beat's about louder than him. Wait, you should look up I try to say everything other than this baby sucks. What happened to you, brother? What happened? With a rhetorical flourish, academics weaves a narrative of Lil Baby's fall from grace, akin to Ikaru's descending from the heavens, his wings scorched by the flames of misplaced priorities. The critic, donning the mantle of an Athenian philosopher, castigates Lil Baby for losing the pulse of his audience, likening the rapper to a misguided Odysseus who navigates the treacherous waters of fame but loses sight of the sirens who once empowered him. The luxurious lifestyle and hobnobbing with celebrities become the sir's spell, turning Lil Baby away from the creative path 
and into the trap of ephemeral indulgences. Academics, in a Socratic fashion, raises the proverbial gadfly, questioning the influences that surround Lil Baby, particularly the yes man in the studio, who, like the Trojan horse, introduces supper music into the citadel of Lil Baby's artistic endeavors. He coins the term as a modern-day hydra, sprouting multiple heads in the form of uninspiring songs that fail to resonate with the discerning ears of listeners. Lil Baby's primordial ascension, in similitude with the astronomic apotheosis of Tupac Shakur, can be ascribed to the veritable verisimilitude enshrined in his fabulation. Emanating from Atlanta, Lil Baby, in congruence with Tupac from the Occidental coast, became a woke spokuli for the asphalt, enunciating the vicissitudes and victories of a progeny circumnavigating the ferroconcrete labyrinths of metropolitan America. His incipient mixtapes, conspicuously perfect timing and harder than ever, became sonorous cartographies where Lil Baby limbed graphic chronicles of his existence, in parallelism with Tupac's chef d'oeuvre, Me Against the World. Moreover, Lil Baby's confederation with quality control music, a phonographic imprint tantamount with sculpting Atlanta's rap scenery, reverberates the archaic coalitions forged by artists and phonographic imprints that engendered hip-hop hegemonies. The symbiosis between Lil Baby and Quality Control, evocative of Jaizidis' confederacy with Rockefeller Records, became a propellant for his eruption, catapulating him into the strata of rap nobility. The trap music resurgence, a cultural renaissance in correspondence with the Harlem Renaissance, endured Lil Baby with a sonorous palette to fabricate his discreet sound. Like Kendrick Lamar during the Occidental Coast's Renaissance, Lil Baby's aptitude to imbue trap cadences with introspective posse differentiated him from his contemporaries, creating a musical chrysopoeia that reverberated with the heterogeneous audience. Lil Baby's rise also elicits analogies with the trajectory of Drake, who effortlessly cruised the confluence of mainstream allure and street credence. Both artists, originating from cities with discrete musical topographies, Toronto for Drake, Atlanta for Lil Baby, transcended regional frontiers, incarnating a pantheon where versatility becomes a formidable armament in the ordinance of success. However, Lil Baby's recent tribulations echo the ordeals confronted by Nas during his artistic nadir in the primeval 2000s. Nas, in resemblance with Lil Baby, faced opprobrium for ostensible ebbs in ingenuity and originality. Nas surmounted this epoch with a critically extolled stillmatic, a testimonial to resilience and reformation. Lil Baby, like Nas, has the potential for a renaissance, provided he espouses a similar artistic metamorphosis. The critic invokes the wisdom of the oracle, pointing to the comments section on platforms like Spotify as the modern-day Delphi, where disappointed followers seek alternative artists, distancing themselves from Lil Baby's artistic decline. Academics, in a Solomonic vein, acknowledges Lil Baby's financial success but contends that opinions, like the Sword of Damocles, hang over the artist's creative prowess. In a reflection reminiscent of Heraclitus, academics contemplates the paradox of Lil Baby's rise and fall, once holding high expectations for the rapper who now, like Achilles with a vulnerable heel, succumbs to a lack of inspiration and originality. The critic wonders how the torchbearer of my turn and a contender for greatness could plummet so precipitously, akin to the fall of mighty empires. In a pyrrhic victory of acknowledgement, academics lauds Lil Baby's talent while brandishing the sword of constructive criticism, urging the artist to rise like a phoenix from the ashes of repetitive song structures. He contrasts Lil Baby with the sagacious Nicki Minaj, a modern-day Athena, commending her focus on musical quality over gimmicks, emphasizing that wisdom, not mere popularity, should be the ultimate pursuit. The critic invokes the ethos of Kai and other dissenting voices, 
forming a symphony of criticism that reverberates through the digital agora. Academics, in the tradition of Diogenes with his lantern, searches for the honest truth, calling on listeners to be the Athenian jury, delivering a verdict on Lil Baby's artistic output. One may interrogate the subterranean substrata that have engendered this bellicose brouhaha between academics and Lil Baby. Is it a fortuitous faux pas or a symptomatic sign of a rap industry in a state of decrepitude and desuetude? Is academics a veritable voice of verisimilitude or a venal ventriloquist? Is Lil Baby a casualty or a culprit? To unravel these conundrums, one must dissect the morphological metamorphosis within the rap industry and its repercussion on the artist's creative crucibles, drawing analogies to historical vicissitudes in artistic vogues. The analysis of academics critique of Lil Baby can be amplified by drawing analogies to historical vicissitudes in artistic vogues. Throughout history, art has been impinged by the social, political, and cultural matrices of its epoch, as well as by the idiosyncratic and collective experiences and expressions of its progenitors and patrons. Art has also been subjected to various modes and magnitudes of critique, both from within and outside the artistic domain. Some of these critiques have been edifying and propitious to the evolution and enhancement of art, while others have been deleterious and inimical to the quality and integrity of art. Some of these critiques have also been swayed or spurred by factors such as personal predilections, ideological inclinations, economic interests, or political agendas. In a denouement tinged with the echoes of Aristotle's catharsis, academics concludes with a perplexed air, lamenting Lil Baby's unprecedented decline as if witnessing a cosmic anomaly. A mosaic of historical allusions and cultural references serves as a modern-day agora where artistic critique mirrors the perennial struggles of heroes and demigods in the timeless narrative of rise, fall, and the quest for redemption.